well, what is consciousness? Well, I mean, it's a vast question. I think consciousness is the realm of possibility. And you can't know about possibilities unless they're in a conscious space. I think minds are containers of possibility. Possibilities are not physical facts. They're just possibilities, and they can only exist in something like an imagination. Um, so um, I think our conscious minds are, you know, that's what they do. They're to do with choices among possibilities. Our unconscious minds are about habits, things that we just do automatically. We don't need to think about them. And I think all minds really are spaces of possibility, even the mind underlying the cosmos. So I, I think, think of minds in general as conscious spaces or realms or containers of possibility. Are you not on the road there to panpsychism? What, what do you think of you know, panpsychism? With there's some panpsychists here. What, what, what do you think? Oh, I'm pro panpsychism. I just think most panpsychists don't go far enough. Um, most panpsychists talk about the consciousness or minds of electrons or protons or, and, and atoms and things like that, um, which is fine. The reason they do that is because they're trying to explain how we come to be conscious. Um, standard materialism is the doctrine that matter is unconscious, the whole universe is unconscious. And then they have the problem, okay, well if everything's unconscious and everything's made of matter, including our brains, how come we're conscious? So then they have to say, well, the consciousness somehow emerges out of complex arrangements, but how can something totally different from unconscious matter emerge? That's called the hard problem in the philosophy of mind. So to get out of that, some panpsychists, uh, some materialists have become panpsychists by saying, okay, well, let's have a little bit of consciousness in electrons and atoms and things. So uh, consciousness can emerge from something that has a much, much lower grade of mind or consciousness, even in subatomic particles. Um, and therefore, we can overcome the problem of how something different in, uh, that's, it's a difference of degree, not a difference in kind, um, the emergence of consciousness in human brains. So I think that's fine, I don't have a problem with that, but the question I then asked them was, well, what about the sun? The sun is a self-organizing system. Uh, what does the sun think about? What's the mind of the sun like? I'm Personally, I think the sun's conscious, and indeed the entire galaxy and the whole universe. So um, I'm in favor of panpsychism, but pan means everywhere, psyche means mind. Uh, I'm in favor of panpsychism, I just think it's a, a much too limiting to confine it to the realm of subatomic physics. So consciousness is not an emergent property of, of material? It's... Well, emergent property, I mean, what does it mean? It means that something comes from something that wasn't there before. It's a way of conjuring something out of, like a rabbit out of a hat. Um, you see, there are, there, there are three main ways of thinking about it. One is top-down. The whole universe is conscious, and um, even before there was any matter, there was consciousness or mind. And um, the evolution of matter in the universe is the, con the universe uh, has lower and lower levels of consciousness as it evolves. The Big Bang, the entire universe is one system, one mind, as it were. Then the fields of physics and things separate out, and stars and galaxies and whatnot. So uh, then you have the emergence of many forms of consciousness, and then on life, uh, life on Earth you have, uh, I dare say in biology, there is an emergence of higher forms of consciousness. I mean, we have more than a worm or a bacterium. So in that area, in, 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 then you could say that there is a kind of emergence. But the top-down consciousness means you start with consciousness and it goes down from above, as it were. The bottom-up materialist theory is you start from subatomic particles and atoms and you work your way up and then you have to say, well, it emerges. But you could just as well say it descends. Uh, the third position is to say, well, it's both. Uh, there's a sense in which there's a, um, an emergence or an appearance of higher levels of complexity with more complexity. But it's not that it was not there before. Um, I mean, after all, our evolution has happened within, on the planet Earth, within a galaxy. And what if the whole galaxy and what if the whole solar system are conscious? And what if Gaia, the Earth, is conscious? Then our consciousness has appeared within much larger conscious systems. 
So, you know, these are philosophically different ways of looking at it. There's a prejudice in modern science in favour of materialism and reductionism and bottom-up explanations. But that's really a f kind of philosophical fashion, it's not the truth. How long has it been the fashion and how much further do you think it's, it's, gonna, it's going to be the fashion? Well, it's been the fashion since the late 19th century. Science became dominated by materialism in the late 19th century. And in many ways, our views of matter have changed since then. They had an old classical physics view of matter as little atoms, as little billiard balls. Uh, quantum theory changes that very radically. Um, and they didn't know about the galaxies beyond our own, or the Big Bang, or modern cosmology. So uh, all these things have changed, but the philosophy of materialism is sort of locked in a 19th century worldview. And, um, of course, you can have an updated materialism, and in a sense, Panpsychists are trying to update materialism, but as soon as you admit psyche or mind into matter, then it's not really materialism, it's really a form of animism. Animism is the belief that the whole of nature is alive, and the whole universe is like an organism, not a machine. I think that's a much more reasonable view myself. So what we're at the moment in is a kind of conflict between old-style materialism and, and and a kind of animism or panpsychism struggling to get out. And so far it's only got as far as atoms and molecules. Um, but one reason I like to ask panpsychists about the consciousness of the sun is that I think they're on a slippery slope. Um, and I'd like to push them down it a bit faster than they go on their own. And uh, discussing the consciousness of the sun is a very good way of accelerating this slide down the slippery slope into a full-blown animism. It seems to me like there's a... What, what's, what, what's the basic definition of consciousness then? What, what is this thing that, that materialists and animists will, uh, are kind of scrapping over? Well, I mean, there's hundreds of definitions, but it's to do with awareness. Um, and as I said, to start with, possibility. I, that's my own definition. It's about a realm of possibility. Um, they would say it's about perception, awareness, um, algorithms in the brain, you know, as soon as you get into modern cognitive neuroscience, then um, the brain is a computer, consciousness is just the software programs running it. But they, of course, needn't be conscious. In fact, they're not conscious. Um, so in the materialist philosophy of mind, consciousness is either an epiphenomenon that does nothing, like a kind of shadow of physical activity in the brain that has no role, and there's no free will, it doesn't actually do anything. That's the majority view. Or else it's an illusion produced by brains um, because it might have some conceivable evolutionary advantage, but it still doesn't do anything. The problem is that to call consciousness an illusion doesn't explain it, it presupposes it, because illusion is itself a mode of consciousness. So philosophers of mind in the materialist school go round and round in circles, like dogs chasing their tails, trying to explain it, never succeed. And any one of them comes up with a theory, another one will point out the flaws, and they come up with their own, and the other one will point out the flaws in it. Um, and that's why it's called, the very existence of consciousness is called the hard problem. It seems to me one a major part of that is just the limitations of language, of a word to adequately describe a phenomenon, in a way. I, it, 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 the, it, this, it's, the hard problem is, well, will show many things, but one of it is just how limited English or language is to describe stuff. I don't think the problem of consciousness is a problem of language. I mean, language itself, of course, is a product of consciousness. Um, and language is inadequate to explain many things, including the ultimate nature of reality, the beginning of the universe, and so forth. Um, but I, I don't think the problem is with language. I think the problem is with world views. And do you have a world view that's essentially an atheist, materialist world view? There is no God, there is no consciousness out there. The universe is unconscious. It's purposeless, meaningless. Um, everything's happened by chance or accident. The laws of nature have no particular reason to be one way or the other. We just live in a universe where they happen to be right for us. Uh, evolution is a matter of blind chance mutations and blind natural selection. That's a world view um, that says that consciousness has just emerged in our brains and doesn't actually do anything, also that we don't have free will. 
a deeply depressing world view and I think that when you have whole societies based on it like ours what you'd predict is that lots of people would suffer from depression and the facts actually bear that out. Um, if you think you live in a meaningless world where your mind is just in your brain and it's nothing more than what's happening inside your head, not truly related to anything else, deeply depressing. Whereas if you think that consciousness is primary, that we live in a universe that's purposeful, that our minds are part of something much greater than ourselves, that mystical experiences connect us with greater minds than our own, they're not just serotonin levels changing inside our brains, um, then you have a completely different view of the universe. It's not just a matter of language. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.